flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, roll call, Jared. Barb Barker? Here. Tammy Blank? Here. Cinda Brode? Yes. Julia Tamarki Kukuro? Present. Tom Harley? Here. Mr. Kerr? Present. Mrs. Leeper? Mrs. Lowry? Mr. Shrove? Uh, good evening, everyone. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I don't have a formal board uh, president message prepared, but I do want to um, remind everybody that we are having some discussions uh, starting here uh, next week on our grade configuration in the elementary. Um, and we're looking for some good public input on our meeting on the 16th of August and appreciate uh, everybody that can to participate in that. Um, Ron, go ahead with your solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, a couple things tonight. Uh, let me start with the last meeting. I talked about the Sunshine Act, Act 65, which requires 24 hour notice posting everything that, that Indiana does anyway. Uh, but the change was that if there was something from the floor, a contract, or spending funds, that we wouldn't be able to take action on it. We looked at that legislative piece a little closer. I don't know if everyone can hear me or not. Uh, we took a look at that legislative piece a little closer, and Section E actually does allow the board, if they want to make a motion uh, that would change the agenda, they would have to describe to the community exactly why they're making that change, uh, ensure that there is a verbose conversation on it, and then if they do pass it by majority vote, we would have to post that change within 24 hours. So there is still um, what I'll call a, a little bit of a, you know, Get, gets rid of that heartache that if we need to come up with something, we need to do something last second that does enter into a contract uh, or expend funds that we'd be able to do so, but there has to be a significant or both conversation about that. So I want to give a quick update, uh, update on that. Um, secondly, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, just some of the guidance and CDC guidance, Department of Health guidance, and just try to go over exactly what we're required, not required to do for the board. Uh, if that's okay, Mr. President. Uh, essentially, uh, the CDC put out regulations, and those are um, guidelines. Those are not requirements. They are guidelines. They are recommendations. At this point, the Board of School Directors passed the health and safety plan, and that health and safety plan has masking optional. One item that we do not have control over, and again, there is discussion about this, is on the school buses. Um, TSA and CDC adopted the same order. That order says that we have to have masks on buses. Uh, if you take a look at the frequently asked questions and go back through, um, through that, it says that public transportation is, again, school buses. If you actually take a look at the codified ordinances, it says exactly what a conveyance is, and that's how they've um, looked at that public transportation and being a school district. We receive public funds, both state and federal. Um, one of the other keys here is Pennsylvania Department of Education secretary put out a communication to all superintendents stating that they had to follow the order from the CDC, which was massing on the buses. Um, the final piece to that would be by law, we had to, in receiving our ESSER funds, uh, we had to pass a health and safety plan. And that health and safety plan had to be submitted by July 30th. And by doing so, we received our ESSER funds. We were able to keep the ESSER funds we had received. Again, the concern becomes, Mr. President, is if we don't have our health and safety plan addressing the transportation, um, then they could look at how does that impact our ESSER funds. It's only for the school buses. It's not for the others because those are not mandates. Those are simply recommendations. So I did want to cover that because really it's the confusion over what's mandated, uh, what's required, and, and really what's a recommendation. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions from the board or any reason as to why uh, so, we reviewed it. That so, way. so to recap, Ron, um, there are two federal agencies that have the force of law, the TSA and the CDC in this matter. Is that correct? Both have had the order uh, approved, TSA okay. and CDC. And, and that the, penalt the, penalty, the penalty to the district is that we could lose 
federal or state funding if we don't comply with that. Is that correct? That's the concern. Um, you know, there's been reports out there saying is TSA, they have fines. So if TSA for say your, your, um, bus that's that's in the general public um going downtown the city or something tsa does have civil penalties that are attached to that i'm not saying that that is what the district is going to face civil penalties in that order what we're saying is because the esser funds were tied to reviewing the cdc recommendations our concern is that because we received those federal and state dollars this was a federal order that it could tie into those esser funds so that is the concern in taking a look at that matter okay any questions from the board I assume the um, masking would also apply to extracurricular activities on a bus. That's correct. Any no, any public any, transportation, regarding yeah, extracurricular any, athletics, anything of that nature. Okay, I wanted to make sure that was clear. Yeah, and again, we're still just you know we're still looking to see how that order is going to be impacted, what changes they're going to make. But as of now, again, the Secretary of of uh, of Education put out a memo to all superintendents saying this is what we're expecting you to follow. Again, that's just for public transportation being the buses. That's not for masking in, in the school district. Any other questions or comments from the board on that? Okay, is that all Ron? That's it. That, that's it, uh, Mr. Oh, President. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We do have some um, public comment. Uh, Joe Ferreira. Where do you need me? No, it's for the virtual people. They have to be able to hear it. So, I don't know if you recognize me. I was here uh, not the last meeting. I was not able to be here before, before that, and everybody was uh, kind of up in arms about the masks. Um, came and I want to say, quite frankly, was blindsided by it. We weren't expecting to see this come out, but now it's on my radar. I'm glad to see, you know, the move that had to be made. Um, but I felt the overstep inbound, so I'm going to stay in the court to make sure that I'm here pushing back um, because we have to, just as what Mr. Crash Repack, Brown Hour, I'm sorry, I don't think that's you're right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, So I'm glad because it touched on exactly what I was thinking is. If I am 42 years old and confused when I need to walk into a restaurant and put a mask on, if I'm sitting, standing, dancing, whatever is different, the rules, I can only imagine one of these children that you guys not being a health board as the school board, we need to take the onus on us at the point that these kids have no clue what he just, Mr. Repack just got again done going through about why they're wearing a mask on the bus. Yet they can walk through the school doors and take them off just like they've seen at the restaurants. The duty is on us now to start to educate these kids how these things go about. How do we get here? If we do not take any steps, we are the problem at that point. And I, you got me shaking. Like this, this, this isn't even hard stuff. Like we, as a, as a society, we are practicing intellectual immaturity on a level that I, I just, it's, if you have any basis in righteousness, you know exactly what I'm saying right now. So there is a great suggestion. Honestly, I, I, I would love to know why that isn't done. Why, why are we not teaching these kids? I mean, can anybody here tell how much the suicide rate among children has gone up since COVID? So we're worried about masking these kids, but we're not worried about the things that this is causing to them. Right? This, this, again, not rocket science here. Or are we going to address this at all? Or are we just going to worry about whether or not they get a mask on or off the bus? This is the real stuff. You know, the, the mask, we all know that, like, we're just jumping through hurdles for, for money. We, we get it. They should know that, too. Right? That's what we just got done getting through here. We just we just laid that out, laid it bare. There, does anybody want to argue against that? We're doing this mask on the bus for money. So we need to teach the kids. That's exactly why they're putting on a mask and taking it off. If you want to go further than that, maybe you should start teaching them about particle size and what that mask she's wearing is capable of doing or what he's made is actually capable of doing. Maybe we should teach them what real virologists wear whenever they're being confronted with known issues, what they have to wear to be protected. 
Let's teach these kids to have the ability to see through this stuff. Because everybody here is waiting for it to come down from above, come down from above, when it's just critical thinking required. So can we please just take a step to help these kids learn from these misdeeds that we are doing right now? I'm, I'm sorry, that is my opinion. It's a misdeed at this point. Maybe it's not. Maybe these kids can start to enlighten us. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Here's why do I want to wear a mask now? Or maybe we'll see the other side of it. I have a whole list of thoughts. I just don't even feel the need to get into it. What, what I do, I, my message is coming across. I'm here. I'll be here again. I'm, I'm just not going to repent. These are my kids. <laughs> it's just unrelenting. It's unrelenting. And I'm just at the point. I think everybody, I, I'm, I'm struggling to define it. The best thing I'm coming up with is intellectual immaturity, where we can recognize and act so smart over here, but then we're just going to go ahead and drop it and forget all that over here. I, I'm, I'm losing patience for that. We're, we're critical thinking adults. I, I appreciate you, you know, wanting to stop me. I get it. Like, you know, if I'm rambling, please say I'm rambling. It's, it's, not, it's not rambling, Joe. It's just that we... We have a time limit of, of three minutes, and we want to be fair to everybody. I, I came in a half hour early because of you guys. So, I mean, if you want to give me two minutes of, of my time, because I showed up here, too. I got knocked off work and policy just to get here in time. Luckily, I did get a half hour extra break. I, we're, not, we're not loaded to the gills here. I, I, I'll, I'll bust out my notes if you need to. No, no Joe, that's, that's, right. we're, we're at the three minutes, so thank you. Point is made, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. Uh, Giovanna? Oh, then Jared doesn't have anything to do. <laughs> I appreciate the comments. You saved a lot of stuff that I was going to come here and say myself. Um, I did come with actual studies, facts, science um, about why these masks are pointless. Um, I appreciate the motion last week, or not last week, I'm sorry, last meeting to revisit your decision to force the kids to wear a mask, I appreciate it going back to choice. Um, and while that said, I am still pretty upset that it's going to then change as you see fit. Um, there's no science that states or even supports these kids to wear a mask. However, there is science that states that it is very harmful for them. I'm a parent of two kids in this district. I am here because I have children that had very real symptoms, not these uh, imaginary hypothetical possibility symptoms of them getting COVID and recovering. We now know many things that we didn't know last year, or many people didn't know last year, I'm sorry, but a lot of people are just ignorant to critical thinking. Um, the masks are ineffective. When this started back in March, and they said everyone needs to wear a mask. People put on their masks. They did their research. They realized that the masks don't work. I don't understand why we're even going. I mean, I guess I do understand now it's money, which it always comes down to money, right? Um, the idea that my kids have to wear a mask on a bus and then go into the school, like you stated, what sense does that make? I don't understand that. I don't understand it, and you can't help me understand it because it, there's no science behind that. Why are kids wearing masks on buses? Because you say that they have to so we can get funding. And then you state in the next sentence that the funding it might not be pulled or it might it may or may not. Like, I'm not going to allow people. You're all adults. I don't know if everyone last year decided that they weren't immortal. I don't know if you, everyone's faced with death. We've, you're, we're not, we're not going to live forever. I don't understand. Excuse me for not fully understanding the very real fear, because that is what it is. That's what's driving a lot of this, a lot of people's decisions, people's decisions to continue to wear masks that don't protect them. The mask initially was to be worn. So if you were sick, not 
possibility of getting sick, you were wearing them that so that you protected others. Now people just wear them for pu for public hygiene theater. I don't understand that. My kids had very real symptoms last year. My youngest, who's eight, and was in your nurse's office every single day, every day for months. I mean, you can talk to the nurses. Get ready to stop me, and I'm going to get this out because I know we were the only two speaking. Okay, uh, we, we have. I want to tell you about my kids' symptoms, okay? Because you guys are liable. You're making decisions on their health when I'm telling you that their health was affected last year. They had headaches every day. My youngest has gymnastics. She has tumbling. She yep. made decisions every other day to not go because she was sick. She was not feeling well. She can't breathe. These kids were forced to wear masks outside in the heat, and her teacher would tell them to huddle under a freaking tree J J out of the sh in the shade, okay? J J Where's the science in that? Javonna, Javonna, um, two things. We, had, we, we do have somebody else online. And the other thing is, if you have actual documentation, could, 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 you, could you send us the links to that so, so that we can... Well, I'd like to kind of share it with the board, okay? All right, thank you. Um, is is uh, Jamie Okapal online? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Jamie, if you would, please go ahead with your three minutes of public comment. Sure. Um, while I do want to reinforce what everyone said regarding the masks, I do support their position on that. My question tonight is in relation to the educational component, component expectation as it relates to the potential quarantines. It's been referenced in the past that the students would have access to the teachers for, for 30 minutes after school and on Fridays if they are subject to a quarantine. My concern is that uh, that is not an acceptable amount of of instruction during a required quarantine and what is the board's plan to address this? I do feel like last year we had, I'll be honest, it seemed like a better plan in place, um, even though the students were still considered absent if they were ill, but were able to still join online. This is for the secondary students I'm speaking. Um, they were still at least able to, to participate and, and stay on, on track with what was being taught in the classroom. Um, I realize it's an added stressor on the teachers to do this, and there are some, you know, background technical issues that, that come into play regarding this. However, the option is, is that we're going to be facing potentially, you know, it might be a handful of students, it might only be one or two, but it could be an entire class if they're subjected to a quarantine. And, you know, I, I think we need to ask the teachers and get their involvement in this is what would they rather have the expectation that they have to teach all those students 10 days of quarantined instruction or would they rather have the ability to have some online engagement like we did last year and so i just want to know if there's any plan and what the plan is regarding that and how we can address it okay is that is that all then that's it thank you okay thank you jamie um my suggestion would be to start with the building principal and i'm sure mike will have further guidance at at the appropriate time on how that'll be handled thank you Okay, I uh, we're down to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my report goes over a couple different things. Before we get started, I would like to start, uh, thank Adelphi Village for cleaning up uh, the front of their building. As you know, we had a meeting with them uh, about the building itself, and they have done a great job upkeeping that. So we just wanted to recognize them for their efforts. Additionally, uh, my office got a phone call today about um, uh, making a comment that we would not provide lunches to students. So I sent out a correspondence through social media and on our website that free lunches and breakfast for the 21-22 school year are in place. Um, however, what we would do is ask and require people who got um, sent home a free and reduced lunch applications that you consider filling them out because they may qualify for additional benefits. So we sent out a communication to families about the free lunch and breakfast program for this upcoming school year. In my superintendent's report, it talks a little bit more about what that looks like and why the need for the free and reduced lunch applications, if families so want to choose to do that. And then in the next several days, uh, we'll be releasing information about how we're going to provide meals for those students who are attending uh, cyber cyber learning as well to see what we can do there. And then what we're looking at is bagged meals and bre for breakfast and lunch being available for all those kids who are enrolled and learning virtually. Additional information about the virtual uh, for the virtual students, will become, we become forthcoming, but we thought it was important to really come out tonight and address that one concern. And I appreciate the parent reaching out to me. It was a fair question. 
Uh, she reached out to Anise. Anise then got in touch with me, and I then responded by sending that information out to all of our families via social media. I will try to work on an email tomorrow to get that out because I think that's something we really wanted to correct. Additionally, um, I know there's some concerns, as we heard tonight, about, look, I appreciate the, uh, the public saying we appreciate you making masks optional, but I'm concerned about when you would require them. The one thing we are doing is going to work with local advisory board to talk about that process to make sure that we have input uh, to help us guide us in our decision making. This is this uh, local advisory board will consist of administrators, school nurses and officials from our local health department, as well as IRMC. And the goal is to work collaboratively with our local officials to monitor situation plan orderly to keep families aware about what would trigger mask wearing compared to what not. As you know, we are going to start the year with no mask requirement, but more information will become for, will be forthcoming once all those details are finalized. Additionally, I want to echo Mr. President's comments about strategy solutions starting next week. We're going to have some opportunities again to engage the public on school configuration discussions, and we want to make sure the public is aware to come out if they so choose and if they're available. Additionally, I'm also pleased to announce that the district will be partnering up with the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency to conduct some regional threat assessment training and and we're probably able in their training that's available to our local school districts in the region. Last present, we are now the website is up and running. Uh, we encourage our families to check that, and we hope that they'll find that to be informative, intuitive, and able to contact us if they need be. So that's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, Mike, thank you. Uh, looks like we're down to Section 3, approval of the minutes and the agenda. May have may have okay julia thank you second uh, from tammy okay any questions comments or discussion all those in favor say aye Aye. those opposed motion carries uh board reports uta's not here um mike is there anything from ictc that you're aware of no sir i think they're preparing for the opening school year so we're, they're ready to go for a strong start okay uh barb it's your turn at iu 28 Aaron did not have a meeting in July. We have one here in August, though. Okay, thank you. Tom, it looks like um, academic and extracurricular. Any of that we can take through a, a consent agenda? I hope we can take them all. Any objections to all the way through 5 8? Anything pulled out? Okay, I'll move that um, we approve. Um, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, and 5.8 as submitted. Okay, it's moved in second. Questions, comments, or discussions on 5.2 through 5.8? Mike, do you have anything you want to add? No, sir. These are all discussed at public meetings. Can somebody maybe talk about 5.7 and what the, the um, consumable, consumable materials are going to be Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so when we entered into an agreement with uh, CKLA, which is common, which is uh, core knowledge, language arts, which is the program we teach language arts in uh, K through five, we have to have student consumables, workbooks that the students write in. They do their writing prompts and stuff. They, they are consumed by student learning every year. Every year we have to replenish those. So the cost of that over the course of the year is quite substantial, as you can see. However, on top of that, every year we have to pay shipping and handling. What we're asking to do is to enter into a contract where we will pay all the shipping costs at today's price one time to save that shipping and turn it into a subscription cost that we will just they'll just come in every year and tell us how many we need and then or we tell them how many they need and they just ship it to us so we'll save somewhere between 25 and fifty thousand dollars for the taxpayers over the next five years okay anything else what's a five four with renda broadcasting we they were able to add some additional uh sports which, which will further expand the, the publicity and stuff for our, our students. Absolutely, Mr. Curry, you bring up a good point. What's happening now with live streaming events, there's other competitors, there's other agencies out there, and we wanted to partner with the local company who has local roots and local interests to help promote our programs and our kids. This is a, for a three-year deal that allows us to bring really some good attention to a lot of our sports programmings. Uh, that includes boys and girls 
um, different sports. For example, football, boys soccer, girls soccer, um, and it's enumerated in the contract as well as the uh, one-page scope. But we think it's an important thing because we, we recognize with what's going on in today's society, some people can't make all events. And they still want to view it. They still want to be able to see it. And this allows us to do that with a local partner. So I think it has my support. It makes the most sense. And honestly, they're really, um, they seem to be really in tune with help us support our mission, communicate what's going on here in the district. So I think it's a win-win for both sides, sir. And I think we expanded the number of sports and we, with this agreement. We did, too. sir. We, we extended, extended it by two more sports, men's, uh, boys soccer and girls soccer. Right. And then I was just going to put a plug in for 5.7 at CK, CKLA. There was a couple of teachers that, over the a couple months ago that did a presentation and, and it was very impressive and, and looking like getting great results from that. Thank you, sir. Anything else from the board? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion's carried. Cinda, looks like you're up. Okay, so committee meeting report for the policy and personnel. Um, we met this evening just prior to this board meeting and we went over things that are all on the agenda this evening. Um, we went over the live streaming agreement with Renda and additionally, we're going to um, reach out to high top sports and possibly have hockey also be um, streamed live. We uh, talked about staffing positions in the elementary school and in the junior high, and we're going to be voting on those this evening. The policies that we looked at, um, there were 11 policies that will be listed in the motion that I'll read in a minute. Nine of them are the first read, so we'll be seeing them come back again. The um, two of them are the second read, so we'll be voting on passing those tonight. Um, other than that, we had a non-agenda item where we talked to Strategy Solutions, and that's the company that's uh, working with us to uh, reach out to the community with a discussion about school configuration that Walter mentioned and Mike also mentioned. Okay. So for the consent motion. Consent agenda again. Pardon? Consent agenda again. Um, on 6, 2, 6, 3, and 6, 5, I think we should do consent agenda. Be good. Okay. Thank you. Moved and second. Questions, comments on 6, 2, 6, 3, and 6, 5. On 6-2, board policy number 903. Um, Public participation? Yes. Um, I just, I don't support limiting public participation. It may be uncomfortable to sit here. Um, you never know what will come up at a meeting that maybe somebody will want to um, say something at the end and um, so that's the only policy that uh, I have an issue with. The rest I'm okay with. Okay. Anybody else? Sorry. Yeah, the issue with that is does that get removed from the from the motion? Uh, Mr. Harley, it's it's first reading. So what I would say with that is, is the first reading you have time to the board to deliberate, and the board the policy does not come official to the second reading. So I would say yeah, I defer and leave it on there to you uh, if it's okay with the board. And then second motion or second reading, then you can decide if you want to change or make modifications. After second reading, it does become a policy. At this point, the policy is in place and will stay as until the board approves the second reading. Okay. So if it's a consent agenda and Barb's going to vote against it, then it's the added what they consent oh. for. Actually, I can I can vote for it because there's also another part in that policy that, was my, that, that was my question. that I would like to see change between here and the next one. But you're okay with moving ahead? Absolutely, we could do that. So I'm okay with updating that to allow more public participation. We can definitely work on it. No, no worries. Okay. Any other questions, comments, or discussion on that? All those in favor of six, two, three, and five, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay, those three motions carry. Cinda, go ahead. Okay, 6.4, employment of professional personnel. The first uh, part is that based on the recommendation of the administration, Laura Lamont, that's L-A-U-R-A, L-A-M-O-N-T, be employed as an elementary teacher effective August 23rd, 2021, in accordance with their certification at an annual salary of 
$79,282. That's step three and master's plus 30 pending receipt of updated clearances and clear act 168 forms. The second one is that based on the recommendation of the administration, Christina Gromley, the uh, Christina C H R I S T I N A Gromley G R O M L E Y be employed as an elementary teacher effective August 23rd, 2021 in accordance with the certification and at an annual salary of $69,590. And that is step one masters pending receipt of updated clearances and clear act 168 forms. The third position is that based on the recommendation of the administration, Monica DiLoretto, that's M-O-N-I-C-A, capital D, small e, capital L-O-R-E-T-O, -E be employed as an elementary teacher effective August 23rd, 2021, in accordance with their certification and at an annual salary of $51,752. And that's step one instructional one, pending receipt of updated clearances and clear act 168 forms. The next one is that based on the recommendation of the administration, Natalie Deck, that's N-A-T-A-L-I-E, D, Deck is D-E-C-K, be employed as a synchronous learning teacher effective August 23rd, 2021, in accordance with their certification and at an annual salary of $55,237 at step two instructional one, pending receipt of updated clearances and clear act 168 forms. And finally, last but not least, that based on the recommendation of the administration, Helena Dadson, H-E-L-E-N-A, Dadson, D-A-D-S-O-N, be employed as a learning support teacher effective August 23rd, 2021, in accordance with her certification and at an annual salary of $51,752, step one, instructional one, pending receipt of updated clearances and Act 168 forms. Second. Okay, moved in second. Thank you. Mesmerized. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, Cindy, if you put Tom to sleep. <laughs> um, so, uh, questions, comments, or discussion uh, from the board on these? I, I do have a comment that um, this is an outstanding group. Um, uh, the applicants were tremendous. Um, the, this, uh, these five people are a tremendous addition to our district, some of some of some of we have some experience with. Looking forward to some tremendous education out of these folks. Okay, anybody else? Mike, is there anything you or Rob want to add to that? Yeah, uh, we'll make a quick uh, point. Um, two things will stand out to me. One, not only are they an incredible group of people, this is again use of um, us and our budgeting process to make sure that we're using the funds that were received to help offset some of the costs here locally and make sure that's not coming out of our general budget uh, for the short time while we have the money. As you know, the ESSER funds are designed to help to reduce class sizes. We're exactly doing it and allow us to stay open. And this is a good opportunity. That these people are amazing. Um, they come from a wide variety of backgrounds, but we're very fortunate to have this, such qualified kids here applying here in the district. And uh, we're lucky to have them, sir. Okay. Rob? I would just add, sir, that uh, there were 133 applicants for these positions. It was a very, very competitive uh, interview process. And unfortunately, we couldn't hire them all. Uh, we had outstanding candidates, you know, probably, you know, 15 or 16 deep. So, you know, we look forward to the, the future. It's bright. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I do want to make one quick comment and reiterate something Mike said. Uh, some of these are being funded through some of those federal dollars that, that we received as part of the COVID, as well as the summer, summer staff. So those, that money is actually being used. Uh, for the benefit of our students. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And motion 6.6 .6 is superintendent's goals. 
that the board approves the superintendent's goals for the 2021-2022 school year as submitted. Okay, comments, questions? I sent a comment to Mike about them looking at the graduation requirements. Um, it's a, I would love to get that done, but I understand too that you have 90 hours worth of work to do every week. Thank you, Mr. Harper. Yeah, I added it. I added it. Did you? School, add yeah. I, I think, look, I think the public knows, and so does this board, we're going to value making opportunities available to our kids, and that includes dual enrollment. That means a thorough examination of, of our uh, high school credits, no matter how heartbreaking or upsetting it may be for everyone inside this conversation. It's long overdue, right? We're not saying we're broken. We're not saying we have to fix everything. What we're saying is we want to be reflective and look at those things. So as a result, sir, I did include them, and I thought this. If we make some progress, that's better than no progress. Right. So we're going to go after and, it, sir. And going taking the first step would be very useful. Absolutely. And, and Mike, I understand that your plate's pretty full um, and this is a big deal. Um, and one of the reasons it hasn't been done is because it is so much work. Yeah. And it's not as if you and the administration team haven't been working long hours. No, so thank you, sir. And we're I appreciate you adding it and, and we'll put it under the optional, um, you know, if, if, if the sky doesn't fall, let's get to it. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank sir. You. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, it's one of his top three goals or it's included in one of his top three goals. So I think that uh, speaks well as to, to where the priorities are gonna be. Any other questions, comments, or discussion from the board? Nothing heard. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, Terry looks like uh, buildings and grounds. No meeting report. Uh, the only thing I'll reiterate again is the meeting August 16th at 5.30, we will be going over the uh, discussion with our consultant for public outreach with the grade configuration. And it'll be the first of uh, several meetings over the next uh, two to three months. So, and Mr. Bukovich is gonna be working on a schedule with our consultant of when those additional meetings will be. And, and probably in a couple of weeks that, that schedule will be put out to everybody, so. Okay, thanks, Terry. Um, Julia? It's your turn. Thanks, Mr. President. Uh, we did not have a meeting tonight at the Audit and Finance Committee, but we will have a meeting on August 23rd. That's correct. Okay, at 530. Okay. Um, we have three motions tonight under Audit and Finance. Um, I think we can take them as consent items, although, um, so I'm going to move a um, but I will have a couple of comments um, to ask questions about all three. Julie, I'd like to, I'd like to modify eight four. But you can't. Why? Well, can't. Is it a friendly amendment? Well, it is if you say it is. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a hostile amendment. Not being very friendly. <laughs> I'm not being real friendly. What, what is the problem? Um, this is only for one taxpayer, thirty one oh six. Um, I'd like to make it for all taxpayers and, and stop this discussion with uh, municipal services, if that's possible. Um, we're going. We're, go today, yeah. so yeah. we're going back ten years, and these people are still sending out notices, and they're still trying to collect money, um, and the paperwork's poor. Um, I would, I would love to make this go away, so we don't hear about this anymore. I would agree that I think that these claims are stale, and it's probably as much of a problem from the um, t the uh, government entity not keeping their records up to date and suddenly getting organized, and it's almost become silly. I don't think we have a lot of these, uh, but it seems to me if we could put it on the agenda for the next meeting. We pass this one tonight because it's a specific case and we can discuss it on the 23rd about whether or not we want to have a motion on the agenda to do it as a um, bank. But I don't know right now that we're quite. I, I, I think, Julie, you, you, you make a really good point. Tom, Tom's correct. We, we need to kind of start drawing the line here with these people because we're wasting a lot of time over absolutely nothing. And um, I, th I think your recommendation is, 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 is spot on. Go ahead and pass this one tonight, if that's the pleasure of the board. And then we put a second motion out, uh, either the next meeting or the one in September, basically dealing with the um, um, putting an end time on. The whole thing. The whole yeah, on, this, on when this, this thing is, could, be, yeah. could be done. Yeah. For the... the for the. <laughs> For the for the benefit for the benefit of the 
public and the press, what we're basically talking about here is we had a an, an agency that c collected our taxes for us, and uh, they did a very poor job, and we fired them five years ago, six years ago, whatever that was. Okay, 10 years ago almost now. And they're still trying to come back and, and suck some blood out of this turnip, and and it's, it's basically time to... Uh, try to put an end to this in some official Walter, capacity. almost all the penalty that they're that they're trying to attack is penalty and interest, and none of that comes to the district. None of it goes to the county. All of it goes to the municipal services. So, so we're not we're not walking away from revenue. Okay, where we're walking away from is is our constituents being hassled by by this firm. Why is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I agree. And actually, I, it's okay with the board. I think putting the next agenda because I'm not sure if we even have all the Okay. Should we should we pass this one for thirty one oh six at this point? Uh, again, we discussed that yeah. the board at their discretion, but that would be the recommendation is to pass this one, and then we can come back next uh, okay. meeting with all of the items listed to do exactly what you're. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Kronauer will have a thorough report for us at the next meeting. He doesn't know that yet, but that's all right. <laughs> okay. Question. So then if at the next meeting we have a list of all of the taxpayers that this would affect, when we vote that this is over with, they no longer will receive these delinquent notices from this company? Or We can't know who they're going to dig a file up on next, next Tuesday. Okay. They, and I received one of these. Okay. I, I have too. Yeah. yeah. So it's just... They're going through their files and they're seeing. I received one for overpayment and I got penalty and interest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we won't know the individual taxpayers. Okay, but we know that we that they haven't been working in this district for nine, almost a decade now. Okay, it should stop. And so whatever we have to do to make it stop for all taxpayers, I'm in favor of that. So we really don't know if these guys are just staying up too late or if they're getting up early. I don't know which it is. So we'll have a full report. Probably they're probably hurting financially, and they're just looking to wherever they can grab grab a few bucks for themselves. Mm -hmm. But we do have one, so eight point four. So um, I'm going to have a few questions myself about these motions. But I'm going to move that we approve eight point two, eight point three, and eight point four. So eight point two is the approval. Thank you. Okay. All right, Julia, go ahead with your questions, comments, or discussion. There. I, um, I didn't see anything terribly unusual on the bills um, this month, but I would uh, two. Th if you could give us a report, Mike or somebody, a little bit about um, this is a nice grant we're getting. Um, I drove by Ben Franklin today, but I see we're still kind of not we're gonna not going to be ready for school. So what's going? If you could let us know what's going. On. Absolutely, uh, I know Mr. Banny her team is working with some other folks to try to uh, generate some more funds for outdoor classroom. But this grant is a step in the right direction. Uh, what I think was remarkable about this grant is. The teacher that wrote it, uh, Tara Maruka, doesn't even work in that building. Her kids go on this side of town. But she still went above and beyond to try to make sure that this grant opportunity was provided to that school to give these kids an opportunity. We want to get this done. We're working towards it. Uh, we're fearful we may not be ready by third school, but it's something we're trying to address now through some fundraising efforts and grant writing that we can be ready to go. So you've got a committee working. Absolutely, we do. Yes, ma'am. All right. I have no further questions. Okay, anybody else? Barb? Okay, anybody else? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion's carried. Okay, we're down to closing. We have no discussion item tonight. 9.2 is still on the agenda. Do we have any public comment on agenda items? Yeah, yeah Joe, go ahead. Thank you, about tonight. I want to thank you, Barb. I appreciate your comment on the policy there. That's uh, very stand up, and I appreciate that. I think everybody in the district would appreciate that. It's almost common sense. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't misreading everything here. Real quick, it's just, you know, stating the obvious, it seems as if we are in a reactionary posture right now, waiting for a mask mandate to come down from whoever it is that sends it your way. That it's at that moment when you're going to react. The last time I was here, both gentlemen here stated we had no clue what the punishment would be if somebody came without a mask. We worked through that before we get this, you know, 
you know it's coming, people. At some point, we know the man is going to come and say, put the masks on the kid. So if we could just use this time right now to prepare just a little bit, it just kind of makes sense. We're, it seems like we're institutionalizing this confusion with masks on the bus and off. So it's just, you're warned, right? Like I just wanted to say, had to state the obvious here because it's just on this end, we don't get the feeling that that message is getting received. So if we can work on that in any way, shape, or form, our tone starts to change. Because I tell you, the biggest fear I've got is my kid coming home and telling me they got stuck with something at the school today. That there, I'm not even going to, I don't know the bulk of you, but I'm telling you that's a fear I have. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So I'm going to just table that and let's make you guys prove that that's something I need to be worried about. But you and I both, we all lived through this last year. We all know it's at any moment in time, the new thing that we've never experienced before is going down. So let's not stick our heads in the sand, pretend like nothing's going on. Let's not be reactionary if we take any sort of proactive steps to start to educate these kids so that they are not walking around having no clue what they're doing. Even if it's as simple as teach them, the studies are out there, it wouldn't, if any of these teachers that are so well qualified to do this job, try in five minutes to find the study, that we, we could take any of these masks off of these people and send them to the lab and give a long list of the things that are on them. That's the basic. If we're going to have these kids walking around, shouldn't they know what their hands are putting on these masks and what the, is on one of these things at the end of the day of use? That's the, the most basic thing. We're just putting them on them and just telling them to do it. That's where we're derelict in our duty as a school education system. I'm not trying to legislate. I'm not trying to tell you what the health of any of this. I don't know. You don't know. None of us know at this point. They just fill us with confusion. So all we can stand to do is give these kids a fighting chance in critical thinking. And there's a lot, a lot of headway that can be made there. So appreciate the second go around. Like I said, I just would like to see a proactive stand. Thank, thank you, Joe. Is there anybody else in the in the audience? Okay, yeah, I saw that she was on there. I just I just want to give the live audience any other comments. Just a question. Just a question. Concerning uh, the best break for outdoor classroom and the garden, um, how can the average Joe or Jane public make a contribution? Thank you for asking. Afterwards, I can meet with you. I can give you the letter that we're working on developing. We've yet to release, but I can give that to you after. Or it's Josh and how that they can help out and provide that. We're working with Mr. Bainey's work with the committee, and we can get that to you after this meeting or tomorrow. Okay. But but to be clear, there is they can make a cash contribution, a material contribution, and a labor contribution. Yeah. Um, it's a wide open field. Giovanna, you you wanted to make a comment. I think it might be working. I just want to reiterate what was stated um, about consequences if kids do not wear masks. I want to know the board's stance on students that have medical conditions, reasonings for not wearing the mask. Um, like I stated, I get. Uh, very passionate. My words um, or my sentences aren't always flowing very well, but my point to speaking about my kids' health conditions that they that arose last year from wearing the masks, um, they're not wearing them this year. I guess I didn't really make that clear. Um, we'll face consequences. I don't know. Uh, he asked of whether or not you guys are going to fully enforce. Are you going to kick young students out for not wearing them because you talk we're talking I guess about COVID essentially right um and the possibility of them getting COVID but you're not discussing at all the kids that have you know medical conditions that have arose since last year like the headaches the he trouble breathing difficulty concentrating um those are very real symptoms that came about 
So what is your stance for students that have real symptoms, not the possibility of catching COVID? Should they be taught to recognize and should, I, I mean, yeah. we were talking about wearing masks and preventing this, but why are we not discussing boosting immune systems? We all have immune systems. If you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. And that is what we are seeing now with a lot of people that went out and got the shot and now they are getting sick or they're still catching COVID, right? Because the shot doesn't even work. The masks essentially, especially do not work, okay? So I would like to know what the repercussions are for not wearing masks because my, like I said, my kids are not wearing them. I pay my taxes, my husband and I both work in the borough. Um, you need to provide transportation. Now you're stating that uh, they gotta be worn on the buses to get to school or to and from school. So my kids aren't wearing them. If my child has headaches, chronic headaches every day for wearing a mask, okay, I'm not sending them on the bus to continue this trend. Do we do we answer questions now or do I need to submit to it? Okay. And then I also want to, I, we just it's discussing it's stuff that happened tonight because I would like to touch, I didn't get to it, but I would like to discuss the very real comments made last meeting about segregating the children. You know, that wasn't the term used, but that is what it is. You're speaking of, you want to separate the children, the washed versus the unwashed, the kids that are vet max, wearing that um, the, mask versus not wearing them. That's segregation. To, okay. I think that's insane to suggest even the Ivana. Like um, again, again, the, the time is up, um, but um, I will tell you that there is still some work that the administration has to do on this to answer some of those questions. I don't know that we have an answer tonight. OK, but I know that's part of the process that the administration now has to work on to figure some of that stuff out. They will then bring their recommendations to the board for the board's input, comments, and and uh, improvements or whatever whatever needs to be done there, and then those will be made will be made known. There's no there's not going to be any secrets here, um, uh, but the administration has to have time to kind of vet this thing out. Okay, Mike, you want to say anything on that? I, have, I literally want to comment. So yeah. if this masking on the bus and not in the school happens, please also, let's move on the state the obvious again, you are making the bus drivers the policemen with this, and that should, I would hope, be unacceptable for everybody on the board here. I just needed to state the obvious again. Okay, Mike, any comments? And then we have to get to Ashley. She's been very patient. Yeah, now I'll make it quick. Um, one, I appreciate all the comments today. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, thoughts and opinions on it, and schools are trying to weigh through this and, and see what we could do best to keep our schools open. Um, and we're going to take all this input into consideration. I appreciate the voices. I appreciate the comments. And the one thing that, you know, we wish we would have gotten by now is some sort of um, opinion recommendations of what the department of health wants us to do. If they don't want us to do anything, or if it's up to us, then they should just tell us that. And so we know how to operate. And right now we're still in kind of limbo waiting for them. And I understand. And I agree with um, Mr. Joe, Frere, Joe, Joe. Uh, Mr. Ferrara's comments about, look, we need to make some decisions. I agree with them, and we do. And I wish they would give us some input so that, that can inform our decisions. Not that they're going to give us edicts or directives, but they give us some framework in which we can operate and, and, and make our own decisions because we haven't yet to perceive that. And that's what we're waiting for, Joe. I owe you to be honest with you. I'm going to do it right here, right now, direct with you. We're patiently waiting for them to give something out. You have my word. I, we're I, working I, in the background, and we're doing things we can. The first comment I made was I'm defending the Pennsylvania Department of Education. The onus is on this board. I'm yeah. sorry. Quit yeah. waiting for them. I get it. I get your frustration. I do. I do. Deal with it. I'm sorry, Mr. Harley. Yep. If they come down and tell you something you don't like, that's when you adapt and overcome to whatever they change. Right? Well, I think I think this. I think in the next week or two, we'll hopefully get some information on some clarity because I think your parent, the parents are owed that. So I appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, Ashley, if you can unmute yourself, go ahead with your question or comment. Can you hear me? Okay. 
Loud and clear. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Good evening, everyone. Um, my question was regarding van transportation. My son has autism, so he receives special tra van transportation to and from school. How does that look for him as he cannot wear a mask? He physically can. It causes extreme behaviors. No, uh, Ms. Ms. Klosser, that's a great question. We can address it now. Yeah. If that's okay with you, Ms. Klosser. Uh, that's totally fine with me. <laughs> okay. Sorry to interrupt you. I, didn't, I apologize. No, that's fine. Was there anything else, Ashley, that you wanted or just that simple question? It's really just that simple question um, because I, that just the optional okay. obviously kind of leaves us with having the ability to take send him to school unmasked, but the transportation kind of makes me a little nervous. Okay, Ronald, address that then. Yeah, I just want to address the comments for both because it, it was and continues to be there are medical exemptions. Um, if there is a health or safety issue with your child that you would need uh, to have them exempt, then there are medical exemptions that was in place last year. And that also continues this year. Um, so that and that particular um, information, again, would be shared with our special ed director. Uh, but again, there are medical exemptions for any type of health and safety concern. I know one of the individuals who spoke in public comment also referenced, uh, again, wearing masks and some of those health concerns. Again, those are, those are applied. Um, they're able to get an exemption, medical exemption in some capacity. Um, Can you give an example, Ron, of what they would I, Do they need was, a medical uh, that was going to be so. So what I have, because he, uh, we also have a prescription for air conditioning because his behaviors are heightened when it's 100 degrees in that building. Um, so the psychiatrist gave me a form uh, due to his behaviors, recommending the air conditioner and recommending that he not be forced to wear a mask. Would that be sufficient or do I need to get something that literally states air conditioner is required and exemption is required? <laughs> I, was it, I, I didn't catch what she said it was from. It was, I It's from my uh, child psychiatrist. Yes. As long as it's from a medical doctor in some capacity, we'll be able to get that information. You know, again, okay. I we handle each on a case-by-case -case basis, but that's the type of information we're talking about. Uh, in I, I just don't want to send this and it not work because it doesn't say required or exempt. It says it's recommended that he have hair conditioner and recommended that he be not forced to wear a mask. And again, I don't, I want to be honest, I don't want to debate this in, you know, public comment specifically, but that's something that you definitely want to work with a special education director on. Um, okay. Because again, you know, we talked at length about recommendations versus mandates when we were talking about the CDC guidelines. So right. uh, I can't solicit legal advice or tell you what to right, do right. or not do, but I certainly think there is a difference between a recommendation and a mandate. Um, okay. If, right. If, Obviously. So, yeah. So I, I just... just I, 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 just, I would ask you to share with the special education director that information. Okay. Um, any, any parent, any parent, share that information. And then well, I guess my time's up. <laughs> uh, share that information from a parent with, with the administration. Uh, and we will okay. certainly work through you uh, and, and work with you. We, we have tried to be accommodating. I know this district has tried to be accommodating uh, in every capacity that we can. And then we'll definitely work with okay. the families. And Mr. Zahorchik should have the capacity to tell me if the lingo is not correct and I need to have it rewrote. Is that correct, Mr. Vukovic? That would be correct. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Okay. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we had some enclosures, a conference report. We also had an executive session. Ron, for the benefit of the press, would you tell everybody what the executive session was about? Sure, Mr. President. Uh, we talked about personnel issues, and those were the hirings that you found on the agenda tonight. Um, and we talked about also uh, Mystic Development Tax Assessment Appeal um, that is in uh, litigation currently and settlement update as well. Uh, and that, that were all the items, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, board meeting will be a special meeting on August the 23rd uh, for general purposes. We have a Buildings and Grounds Committee on August the 16th. And again, that's going to be combined with that public session on, on grade configuration. And then on August the 23rd, we'll have an Audit and Finance Committee meeting. Both of those will start promptly at 5.30. May I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.